Hello and welcome to another video. I've gone and done it again. I purchased some more cassettes. I don't need them, but they were cheap and it's a job lot of assorted 70s cassettes. Um, it was on uh, an auction and I won it on eBay at £3.20 plus £8 postage. Now I quite like the cassette I got in the last haul, which was 1971 to 73 cassette, but it was only an empty box, unfortunately. So I don't know why I bought these. Well, that video was quite popular actually, I didn't expect it to be quite so popular. But I do like unboxing cassettes, see if there's anything interesting in there. And I'm quite keen, not on the 70s style cassettes. The problem is, I'm not sure that they'll record very well. So I might in the future give these a recording test. And what I noticed, what I've just noticed is this corner is a little bit wet. Um, I was out, or the whole family was out when these were delivered and the every delivery driver just left them on the doorstep. Now I, our doorstep is in plain view of the passing pedestrians on the street and uh, in where I live you can't go leaving stuff in plain view but it was also raining so we've got a box, a cardboard box with cassettes in it subject to all that rain. Anyway, there we go. Luckily, they seem to be quite well packed. I keep promising myself I won't do any more of these because all I end up doing is taking them and then giving them to the charity shop because I don't want them. And I thought these were all in boxes. And I'm going to put up a screenshot of the listing now so you can have a look. Now, as you can see, no, they weren't all in boxes. Uh, but there are some interesting ones. Um, the wiring boxes, there's one interesting box which we'll come to in a minute. So let's have a look and see what we got. And have a look at the condition of them as well. They've all got various music on them, but I don't know how well it's been recorded. But this seller clearly had, was doing some sort of house clearance. Because there were loads of these. He had He's had about four listings of this amount of cassettes plus about four listings of about 10 cassettes. And they're all up against the piano. So someone obviously loved the music. And, uh, and I'm hoping that each one of these was bought, music was recorded onto it, and then it was played, but not played very often. So as always, we're gonna have, well, not as always, but let's have a look at the uh, leader. Oh, it's quite a light brown, but more importantly, is it doesn't look as if it's all mangled at the beginning of the tape. Quite often, if they've been played in a car especially, they'll be mangled at the beginning and uh, and therefore not be very good unless you skip past the beginning before you record. That's a nice one. So that's type one. I think they're all type one. We'll have a look in a minute. So we'll check out the beginnings of a few of them. That one hasn't got a label on it that says it's got anything on there. Yeah, that one's got a few marks on the beginning of the tape. Not too many though. So let's move along. I'm going to try and keep them organised. I'm going to have a look at all of them as we go. And then I'll um, sort them out at the end to give you a summary. So I've got some BASF ones which are later than these. These are 70s. The ones I've got are 80s. I quite like them really. Another one now. What I'll do is I go through quite quickly. Oh, it's got a different label on it. So that's a 60. That's a 90. So LH SM maybe? Ah, SM is security mechanism. Oh, quite nice those, I like those. I've seen that before on an earlier haul. Okay. There's another one. These Emmy tapes are EMI, I would guess. That one's got uh, Queen, A Night at the Opera. Oh, that's weird. A Day at the Races. I wonder if that's Queen the Group. I guess so. What's this? Multivision. Never heard of that one. Oh, sorry about the focus. What's going on here today? Duke Street, Manchester. There's a phone number there. 061. 
Dark Side of the Moon, Pin Floyd. Oh, that's good one. Hopefully that's that's on there. I might have another tape with that on it. Yeah, see so that one's got a bit of a bit uh, damage on the, f the beginning. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's typical of what you see. Problem is the camera can't focus on shiny objects. There we go. So it's a slight damage to it. Now I don't mind that so much, um, but if I'm recording, then I've got plenty of new tapes I can use. Bat of Hell. Ah, oh, Vangelis. Right, I might try that. So this is proper. There we go, 1981. So that was recorded the 8th of October, 1981. That's how we do it in England and most of the rest of the world. Um, Multivision, never heard of them. If you know the um, origin of these, I'm not one for doing lots of research, but I do enjoy the comments. So we've had a lot of people talk about the Samsung mini discs that I did in one of the mini disc hauls uh, and what type of uh, and where they came from. Now that was quite stiff as I dragged that through there. Yeah, it's got it's got a right tight point there. And apparently, if you you give it a wrap on a book or your hand, you're supposed to free it up. Oh, it's still stiff. So all of these I'll need to wind to the end of the tape and wind back to the beginning before I listen to them, just to free them up a little bit. There's another Emmy tape there. So just as a comparison. Really hard to show that. I'm not going to show them all. Okay, let's move a bit quick, more quickly. Multivision. I might have to look that up, or I might just wait. Oh, Craftwork. I do like Craftwork. That's good. So this is excellent. I know I can listen to all this on streaming, but what's the fun in that? I do like tapes. I'm not going to tell you why I like tapes, but there will be eventually, hopefully, a video that is. Streaming versus mini disc versus cassettes. That one's darker, isn't it? You can't see that. There we go. But that one's quite a lot of thinking ahead because I don't work on scripts, as you can probably tell. So this has got lots of good music on here. Early eighties is probably the. There's a few seventies stuff that I like, but mainly I prefer the eighties stuff and. The 80s stuff, the early 80s stuff is good. Then there's a certain amount of 90s stuff I like as well. Um, bread. Now it's a bit early for me. Bring out space. Oh no, the, the pile has collapsed. So there's, an even, there's another one there. It's different, another different design. Now I wonder where we got all of these from. Early 80s was before CDs. So he must have had a good record collection. So I wonder if these are just backups of his record collection. So what I might be able to do is look up when these albums came out and find out and place them in the right order of when the cassettes were made. What's that? Charts. Oh, so that's tapes off the radio probably. Just a... don't even know what type of cassette that is. That, my guess is that if you look at the... Uh, the texture on that, it's got to be another one of those uh, EMI super tapes. Ah, oh, Memorex, I do like these ones. Various artists, DB, I've had quite, I've got quite a few of these. Is that Howard Jones? Oh, I like Howard Jones. That's early 80s as well. Peter Frampton Comes Alive. Well, so we've got quite a few different uh, tapes already. Context. Audio Gold, I heard someone, was it me who was talking about that? I think I might have found one or I saw someone else doing a uh, information about Contech Audio Gold. That one says Blondie, eat the, eat to the beat, hard to read. Yeah, quite, quite a nice type. Oh, Curries, so this is going to be dreadful, this Curries one. What is wrong with the focus today? But Genesis, so um, I give that a listen as well. Let's have a look at this one. It's 
Let's use a motorcycle noise. That one doesn't look very promising, does it? Look at the state of that. Now, I wonder if that's got something to do with how bad the cassette was or how much it was played. Now, I wonder if he bought his cheap cassettes and played those in the car and kept the better cassettes for playing at home on his deck. Another Memorex. My Coldfield. Okay, whatever that is. Yeah, so my guess is he's just um, recording his albums he's buying on these. What is that? Avcom Professional Cassette. Uh, there's a boots one. That's that screams seventies to me. That oh, I quite like this colour scheme. I prefer a little bit darker on the yellow. I prefer it to be brown. Put a, a cassette bit of tape trying to escape there. That was not being rewound. Another one of those there. Oh, he's put dates on them as well, so that's handy. Thirteenth of March, nineteen eighty. Queen. Oh, let me have a look off camera at this one. Yeah, look at the state of this. It looks like it's got wet somewhere. There's Genesis and either Genesis or Pink Floyd on this side. Can't quite make up the date there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Is that a date? Hard to tell. It's a very light colour though, isn't it? I don't like the way it's pushing against the pad either. Maybe one I won't play my best deck. And the last of the ones without boxes. I'm glad I kept boxes from the other one for the other hole. That's quite nice, isn't it? So, where's that from? Pyral Super Ferrite. So that's going to be awful, probably. So this is an insert from after shooting the rest of the video. I was looking for a cassette comeback video, which talks about this uh, secure mechanism uh, cassette which I found, it's this one here, um, but as I was going through it, he started talking about this brand of Pyrol, uh, Pyrol Sulpiferite C60. And in it, he says that it's actually a Type 3. So this is a Type 3 video. I'm going to watch that video and I'm going to link to it in the uh, description box below. So back to the main video. I was just having another look at that. Now, the other cassette holes I've got where people have given them to me, I'm reluctant to sell those because they were given to me. Look at the state of that. But some of these I might sell and pass on to help fund future crazy purchases from eBay for stuff I don't need. I do actually, in about, from the time I'm um, recording this, Probably in about two months. I do intend to sell um, my surplus mini discs and various other bits, but I'll do a video for that. So, and as soon as the video goes live, the listings will go live on eBay. So, if you want a chance to buy some of these from me, um, make sure you're subscribed and you click the notification bell. I sound like a proper YouTuber now, don't I? That's a really nice tape. Yeshima, Yeshima UFO 1. I quite like that, it's unusual. Some of these I just put on my desk because I like the look of them. That's from a previous haul. But it looks like he's kept these in really good condition. That's not been rewound, but there's nothing wrong with the cassette, no, the tape on it. Where's my box? Right, running out of space. There's another contact there, so that's nice to have the box. Wow, grand total of 48p. See, the thing is, it looks cheap, but I've got a funny feeling this isn't a bad cassette. And just, you know, it's a, a decent recording. You can make a decent recording on it even now. 
Asian Republic of Ireland. There you go. Very nice. I often wish I could have it like a display wall with lots of different cassettes from different eras on it. Maybe one day. Wow, look at that. All right, quickly, can you figure out who this is, who, um, which, uh, which band these songs are from? I can't. That's very neatly made up, isn't it? A few more on the back there. Oh, there's doors. Okay, what tapes are on them? Brr. Oh, curries. <laughs> it feels quite heavy, actually. Made in Italy. Very nice. Songs of Leonard Cohen. Moody Blues. Have a look at the inlay card, or the J card, whatever you want to call it. This will take a few people back, I bet. Oh, man, in fact, by 3M. Hopefully you're not too distracted by the background noise. It's quite late on a Friday night and the family's in. So pause, I'll, I'll go through these more quickly, but you'll have to pause them if you want to see. Um, all right, so there's no, no prizes here, EMI C60. If you want to look at the track listings, you can. Oh, that looks awful, doesn't it? What I think has happened here, the glue has given up a little bit on these labels and it's just got a bit greasy underneath them. So we've got some of those. It's nice to have the uh, inlay card for that. Even better if the inlay card was unused. That looks, looks very late, six, uh, 70s to me. So those of us who have lived quite a few decades will might be surprised to realise that the 70s, some of these came from the 70s, they could be nearly 50 year old now. That one's been over recorded with some tape. Emmy tape, yeah, my tape. That's a 120. So let's have a look. Don't tell me we've got some extra sticky labels or something here. Look at that. Now that is not, that's more recent. I'm pretty sure that's more recent. It might not be. Agfa. Made in Korea. So that's an Agfa cassette box with an EMI tape. And that, I think, belongs to a different cassette altogether. But we'll put it back in there for the time being. Okay. Ace, whatever that is. Another BASF tape, if it's in the right box. Here it is. Now that looks orange on camera, but it looks red to my eyes. Actually, I've got... I remember these screw heads. Flathead. Tiny little window. It's like the back of a Land Rover Discovery or something. Right. Let's see if we can pick up the pace. Oh! This is it. Look at that box. I've seen someone open one of these boxes. I think it was Tech Moments hinged. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> it's a very weird box. I've never actually handled one like that before. Oh, that's quite a nice cassette, that. So that's a MRX2 Oxide. MRX90. Shame about the... Uh, uh, Tipex on there, so that is 2005, I would guess. Radio 2. But this must be a really old tape though, because it still states it's at one and seven eighths inches per second. So it must be a really old cassette, as evidenced by the weird box. But a quite a recent recording, as of recent, it's still uh, what's that? 18 years ago. I really like that box. That's one of the reasons I bought this lot. I thought. I'd, I'd pay a few quid just to have that box. So very nice, I like that. And the label is stuck on the outside. Very nice. Okay, what we've got here, this looks like a, that's another EMI. Themes. 
We're hard to read writing by today's standards. A couple of those, aren't we? Oh, Memorex, but this feels like a different box. Ooh, I like that. That's a nice cassette as well. That box has got a stop on it. You can't open it any more than that. That's quite a nice cassette as well. Oops. That's interesting. It's got the Dolby. Uh, it's Dolby trademark on there. Santa Clara, that's California, isn't it? So I wonder why they've got that on there. There we go, that's just how you're supposed to. Back in the day, this is what they recommended to keep your cassette decks nice and uh, healthy. You can have a look at that in your own time. Pause it. Okay, but we're moving on. Really nice box though. It's got it's like sides on it. I don't think Cassette Comeback watches my channel, but if he is, he's probably going, that's a 1984, that's a 1978, this one could be 1985, Humph, same again, quite a nice Cassette, what about that leader? Sorry, you can't see, I'm so, cool, look at that leader. Look at that in there. Let me have a look off camera. So there's no spring under that. But it's got like a silver coloured insert on it. A white leader. Let's have a look, wind it on a little bit. Look at that. Hardly a mark on that cassette. Looks like it's almost never been used. Very nice, I like that. MRX1. Emerex, oh Memorex, Memorex, Memorex. Pretty cool. Oh, bought boots. Now, boots used to do some decent quality um, tapes. I've got a whole batch of the uh, chrome ones from the probably, I would say, uh, late 80s or early 90s. Is that Chrome? MF2. No, it's normal. It's type 1. What about inlay card though? What do you call them? Inlay cards? J cards? Shiny. Put it in the comments. Inlay cards or J cards? I'm pretty sure I used to call them inlay cards. But now with YouTube, all the uh, specialists, the experts call them J cards. What's this on? It's faded and hard to get out. There we go. That's what I think it should look like. Audio magnetics. I've got an audio magnetics, I think, tape with a um, three kilohertz tone on it. So that should be darker. So that's been left in the sun. track of how many we got. Anyone counting? We've seen one of those already. And these are one of the cases I think that don't open. Yeah, they're stuck. Quite nice cases. Blue leader on this one. Oh, that I think is another one of those, isn't it, from earlier on. I wonder why the labels have come off. Another Memorex, I think. Special offer. Doesn't tell us what it is though, does it? So do we get to the bottom of that? These MRX MRX3 oxides, are they just normal ferric ones? Yeah, normal bias, yes, yeah, so just type one. Another BASF. 
there's plenty for me to listen to. Oh, look at that. What's, what's going on with me and green cassettes? There's a BASF. Oh, hang on. Whoop. Oh, is that the same one? I think these are very similar. This one I think is earlier and then this one came out. I wonder if there's... That's from the previous um, cassette haul I did. So let's have a look. So that's the address. Yeah, it's the same one. So yeah. That's weird, that is, because I didn't know this was in the in the. Uh, I might have seen it in the listing, then forgot it was there. But look at that cassette. Very nice, just flat head screws. Oh, it's looking a bit sad though. At that point, anyway. Oh, yes, yeah, it's in poor condition. That cassette. I'll leave it there because I might. Uh, I'll give that a listen anyway. Deep Purple, I don't think he's a band that I'm familiar with, so I'll probably. Uh, and Jess Roden. I don't even know who that is. Oh, it's nice to get something similar to that. Yeah, I don't think I would have known that that was, that was in there. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted some more 70s cassettes, because I really like this, and this is early 70s, just because they're interesting to look at. Well, look at that. <laughs> Prince of Wales Wedding. Wow, that's on topic, because this is now the uh, week, it's the Friday after the coronation that I'm recording this. So that's quite interesting. So that's what he's written, line in. So he must have had a decent deck, line into a cassette deck. That's what I was guessing, just from the listing and the cassettes and the condition I could see on the photos. My, my guess was that he had a decent collection and some decent recording equipment. Right, should we put it in the deck? Right, let me fire up my Pioneer. Doing this live and unedited now. And we'll see if it was the uh, wedding. Oops. Hopefully that's not too loud. Come round the corner. Yeah, there it is. People who can are waving their flags and cheering them. horses, Lady Penelope and Kestrel, both used by the Duke of Edinburgh on driving championships. Well, I better not play any more of that because even though it is what 40 years old, something like that, um, it's probably copyrighted. So, uh, what was that? 1981. There we go, 29th of July 1981. Weird that I should pick that up. The uh, within a week of the King's coronation. Wow. Very nostalgic, let's turn that off. Right, another Memorex. Seen these before, so I'll skip through that. Another special offer one. Oh, another one of these boxes. Sorry, I'm, let's move my camera down. Yeah, very professional. Yeah, I like these boxes. But I haven't quite got the hang of taking them out. So that, I guess that's what you're doing there. Hang on. That'd be easy, wouldn't it? Oh. We've got... Oh, there we go. So they've got two little um, dimples there. No, dimples. There's dimples on there. And there's... Uh, little buttons on there. So the more you squeeze it, the harder it is to get back out. I can't get, can't get it back in, so... I guess you don't want to press on there. Oh, look at those hubs. Hang on. They're not hubs. Oh, right. What the... Right. Now, normally, you'd put these in. Oh, that's clever. I've never seen anything like this before. Now, with this uh, with uh, this type of cassette box, just a regular old cassette box, you have little pins here 
to stop the tape from unspooling when it's in the box. And you know, just undoing if you're in the car, the motion of the car, you'd spin the spin the spools at a different speed because of different weights, and then the tape would unspool and then get stuck in your cassette player. So on this type of cassette um, box, you can't have those because it slides in. You can't have those little um, bits that poke into there. So that's what these are for. And I've never seen these before. So let's have a close look at that. So the three little spurs go in there and then these three little flat bits push against the side of the um, of the case. So that now should be quite difficult to spin round. Yeah, it is very hard to spin round. Can do it, but it would keep that in situ um, while it was being transported. Wow, never seen that before. I still can't work them anyway. Very cool. Right, I think this one's probably a pretty common one. Tony Hancock. Yep. Ah, I love that colour on there. Ah, oh, it's another one with these little hub, these little, what are they called? Anyone know what they're called? Very cool. Oh, is that another one? Yeah, but this one hasn't got those. So I suppose what you could do, you could rewind it. Oh, look at the tape pack on there. Am I using the right terms? You could rewind it all the way to the beginning and then say this was the beginning of side one. When that's fully wound to the beginning, you could pop one of those in there. You wouldn't need one there because it can't it can't wind any further off of that spool and that would just keep it from um, spooling off. So what's on this one then? 1977, right, okay, that's cool. So this must be, um, this tape must be no uh, later than 1977, unless he had it on reel to reel or something like that. Then he's put it on the tape. Okay, nice to have a little bit of history on some of these. Oh, there's a burgundy one as well. <laughs> Roxy Music. I was listening to that in the car today. How are you supposed to get these out? Am I missing a trick here somewhere? Dusty. Oh, they're just stiff. Maybe that's why that's... Oh! Maybe that's why that didn't uh, take off that type of cassette box. So if we can get a close look at that, there we go. Are they the four tracks? Yeah, so there's two tracks. So stereo has got two tracks. So each side has got two tracks. They look like the four tracks. Now I've no idea. If you if you're a cassette expert out there, tell me if this is normal for some tapes or whether this has been played in a really worn uh, cassette deck and it's just etched those tracks on there but still very cool nice to have a different color box of that style had to have a little break there because there's some noise in the house I like this yellow Yeah, we've got some of these already, haven't we? But now we've got a box for them. So let's have a look at that. I haven't taken this out. You can't smell it, but this has got a faint odour of cigarette smoke. Which reminds me of earlier times, because you don't get that very often nowadays. Yeah, nice to have a box for it. Oh, Agfa. I think we had one of these earlier on, didn't we? It was one of the first ones. No idea who they are. Oh, label's falling off again. <laughs> yeah, we did have one of these, I remember this. This is a high energy one. Must be from the 70s.
I'm running out of desk space, but we're running out of cassettes. Oh, look at that. Perfect block writing, block capitals, we used to call that. Girls, you can read that quite clearly. Ew, what's this? Oh, it's another green one. This one's a courage one. Look at that. It's weird. Made in the USA. I suppose you've got to look at the tape then. Where's my Bic? Matching green Bic. Look at that. No, no trouble with these tapes. You know, very few of them have got any marks at all at the beginning. That one's got a few little marks. A little bit of stretching on the edge. It's a very grey type of colour. Sort of like a like an ash. Brown ash. Yeah, never seen a cassette that colour. Well they do make cassettes now that colour. Um but the tape stock is not very good in it, apparently. It's 3M, so Curry's have got 3M cassettes. And I really am a firm believer that there were a lot of cassettes made and mini discs made by a few companies and then rebadged for different retailers or different brand names. Oh, first Scotch Diner Range. Scotch Diner Range. Uh, I wonder who this is. So, oh, Pink Floyd. Not a big fan of Pink Floyd, a little bit before my time, dare I say, just about. Like that. So that's a clear one as well. Oh, that's that's weird because that's got a very similar. What's that other one I just had? So this is a Curry's. This is a Curry's one, that's a Scotch one, clear shells, let's match them up as if I was doing this with mini discs, let's find side A, have we got side A in there, so that's side A, that's side A, okay, so let's compare these now, so let's look at the mouldings at the top, now they're different, so that one has got a made in sticker there, made in USA, right, fair enough, no, quite, they're quite different, um, that one's got like a ridge on it. But the tape inside looks very similar. Let's find it the right way. Oh, that's better. Yeah, so that one's slightly more brown, the one at the bottom. But it's got that sort of, um, sort of ash, you know, like ash tree. Um, Right, okay, so they're very similar. Look at the J Pod for the Scotch one. Wish I had dates on this. I wish they put dates on them. It says 1940 there, I'm pretty sure it wasn't 1940. So neat handwriting on that. It's like an art form. Right, it's nearly done. What I'll probably do with these because I like the look of the uh, cards is turn the J cards back the way they were when they were bought and then just have them on this for a little while while I decide what to do with them. So what's this? Oh another wood or gold one, Evita. I won't be listening to that. Yeah we've seen one of those already I think. Oh, that's a 120 as well. Right that's it. So I'm gonna have a little sort out and um oh that's another long video sorry about that i have a sort out and do a summary. Back in a tick. Right, I can only just get them all in shot, but then you can't see them in much detail. So let me just move the camera and we'll go over each row, I think. Right, let's start at the top. We've got one Boots. Quite a nice card on that. We've got a Curry's C90, another Curry's C90 and a Curry's uh, C120 in some nice boxes. I like the design on this one. So this is uh, EMI Standard and EMI Standard, two different colours for uh, C60 and C90. Quite nice uh, J cards as well. Um, these ones are Supers, 
unfortunately the colours faded on that probably because of the glue and uh, the C60s and the C90s. We've also got these ME tapes or EMI tapes, uh, a 90 and two 120s there. And these are quite interesting, I quite like these. Um, ME tape one X1000s. And one that looks like it's seen better days, an ME tape C60. Moving on to these ones, I've covered those ones. There's a single Scotch Dyna range. Um, I like the green. Um, lovely uh, J card on those and something I've just seen on this when I turn this round is um, this one's a new one and I believe these came from the same series and you could get different colours for these um, but what I saw on there was that's the, what the special mechanism is um, these are BASF obviously and what it is let's find something to point with that will do the tape comes around here around the spools but this part here is responsible for keeping the tape, I think, evenly packed on the spool. But what happens is these, uh, I've seen this on cassette comeback, when you're playing these, these have become sharp or rigid or whatever, these little orange bits here or red bits. And what they do is they start slicing into the tape. So from what I've seen, you're supposed to remove these parts from the special mechanism. So I'm going to have a look and see if I can find the um, cassette comeback um, video that relates to those. And uh, I'll watch it again and I'll put a link in the description box. There are links in the description box to anything relate, related that I've talked to in my videos and other people's videos. But I quite like that. But obviously I'm a bit worried about playing them with those special mechanism uh, arms in them. So let's pop that in there for a minute. But I don't mind if I never play this one, I just like the colour of it. Okay, these are fantastic. One in burgundy and all these in black with these special, um, I don't know what you would call that, uh, lever uh, opening cases. I really like those. Um, some of these, that looks really cheap, but the cassettes that are in them look quite nice. Um, again, the box on these doesn't open fully, so... Stands up like nice, but I quite like the cassettes on these. And uh, same, they're slightly different design. So these ones are MRX1s, and these ones are DB, which I think was a more popular series. And moving over to the last two rows, which I can't quite get all in shot, so I'll show you those separately. Uh, these BASFs, quite nice. Um, I don't know how good they are in current in day-to-day -day use. Labels falling off these um, Agfas, a lone WH Smith cassette, I don't think I showed you that. So these are like um, store brands, if you like, boots for those. And this one, never heard of this, Yashima. And finally, Quite a few, a few of these multi-vision ones. Never heard of those either. I think that says Pyrrhal. Never heard of those either. That's probably a Type Zero, I would guess. A Lone Konica. So that's probably. I think Colin Konica had their own shops, high street shops. Uh, quite a nice shell. AVcom professional cassette. Uh, London, England, so I don't know where they were made there or that was just where they were sold. A poor faded audio magnetics corporation cassette. And I don't know whether it's anything to do with them, but I don't think so. Some of these Contec audio gold ones. So quite a nice haul. I suppose if I had to pick some favourites, I love the shell. I love the cases on these. I love the colour on this one. I think that's one of my favourites there, these two, I like those especially. So for the amount I paid for it, which was uh, about £10, but that in, I think it was, let me just check. £3.20 was the bid, £8 postage. So £11.20 including £8 postage, that was the winning bid. So I'm very happy with this, got some really nice cassettes. Um, hopefully they'll play all right and there's actually some quite interesting music which I'm looking forward to playing on those.
So that's the end of this video. If you like cassette haul videos, um, there'll be a box on screen now where you can look at another cassette haul. There'll also be a box where YouTube recommends one which it thinks is best for the viewer. There's my Patreon there if you want to put some pennies in the pot to help fund some of these purchases. Just below the video, there's a thanks. If you want to pay us a, a tip, a one-off tip, you can click on the thanks and send me a super thanks. Thanks very much. See you in the next video.